ZTV Channel 8. Values, and this is your statement. That's, that's, uh, is that that guy? <laughs> Life is meaningless. No, no, it ain't. Life has meaning, but most of the powerful people in life are chasing the wrong are they're criminals <laughs> are corrupt the, this is the hardcore uh, community sort of sort of you want to hear the music let me just David let me just um, I'll read the lyrics here I will not perform the uh, say it growing concern it's the title of this huh? listen to this wait a minute smashing the statues go crashing and all your ancient ideals your morals we question put them to testing rules broken you you thought were of steel <laughs> scrupulous children we number in millions we won't stand for any more of your crummy ideal <laughs> Yeah. Like that for all of us. <laughs> all right. Well, tell me what. Tell me. <laughs> In other words, there's not one banner here, Marge. Yeah, you know, everybody has like their different views about everything. We're no different from you. You know, it's like everybody's the same, and you so know, don't make such a big thing out of it. You know. <laughs> Antisocial. Yeah, and it's a tattoo. Yeah. On your body for life. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, but you're not antisocial. You're with the community. Oh, yeah, but I, I don't like what your society stands for. I don't want to be into it. I don't like it. And yeah. what everybody else does, you know, so I'm Why antisocial to that. Hang on just a second. Just a second. No, what, like, what, with the what, government, what everybody like that. What I don't it like it the way they act. The way they treat like, people just because you look different. What do you mean prejudice and... Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, people that I knew before, I shave my head and bam, they never talk to me anymore. <laughs> just because I shave my head, they were like, oh my God. Yeah. What were you like before you shaved your head? I mean, it's the same way I am now. Kind of a... No. Independent. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was yeah. the same way I was then as I am now. Right. I didn't change. Uh, on the stage is Natalie Jackson. Thank you. Uh, Natalie's 20. She's from She's from Manhattan. Uh, for you, hardcore is a way of life. Natalie, can I call you a city sophisticate? <laughs> yeah. Tell us what's going on here, Natalie. Let me tell them everything I know about you. It'll take me about 10 seconds. You went to an Upper East Side girls' school. And you thought the values were phony and everybody was into how they looked and whether their boyfriend was good looking and clothes and, uh... <laughs> Jimmy Gestapo is your guy, is he? Yeah. You're an item, are you, the two of you? <laughs> Jimmy is from Queens. You're the lead singer in the heart. Oh, yeah, Queens. You're a leader in the group uh, Murphy's Law. I'm not a leader, I'm just yeah. a singer. You're just a singer. Yeah, the rest of the guys are over there. Yeah. Uncle Alan Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie, tell me what's going on here. What's going on? Yeah. Um, it's kind of bright in here, I don't know. What do you mean? Come on. You know my, what I mean. What What is this? And, and uh, try not to treat me like an old man. Just... You know that you know that we're, we're curious. <laughs> um, well, what do you? Well, what really motivates know. your interest in this uh, scene? Music, really. That's Art what it's car. all about. It's a way of life. Yeah, it's a way of life, but it, it's all because of the music. The music, you know, it, it, it describes feelings, and I think a lot of this is about feelings. Yeah, well, get, share with us some of the feelings that make you feel comfortable in this group. Well, people are always seeming to try to tell us what to do, where to go, how to talk, how to walk, what to wear. And um, I think that this art culture or whatever you want to call it, our, pe you know, our friends, we're all just friends, really. Yeah. We're just trying to say that maybe there's an alternative to what is set before us and told, dictated to us. You know, we're saying maybe there's different ways to live and different ways you know, right. to sing or whatever. You're fed up with being dictated to. Yeah, I am. I'm not speaking for everybody. Right. But I'm what are some of the things that you'd be specifically that you're fed up with, Natalie? 
I'm sick and tired of the values that my parents or that society holds very dear and For near. Example. For example, that you really made it when you drive a $50,000 car. You know, it's very easy to steal one, too. <laughs> <laughs> what else? And that if you don't have a high education, that you're useless. That if you don't have a white-collar job, you haven't succeeded in America. Is there some kind of joy? Do you get a little bit of a kick out of uh, making a... D look, look how thrilled this woman is. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? For I know how she feels. Now, do you get some kick out of making us feel that way? Well, well way do you feel? Everybody feel anyway. We're just trying. To, we're doing our own we're thing. We're just having fun. That's the, you know. That's really. Well, I. I mean, I think most people are out just to have a good time, and it's hard to have a good time when you have to live by what other people consider a good time. I see. We're just a group. I know everybody in the whole peanut gallery here. You know? we're, all, we're, just, we're just a group of friends. You know? We go. We go to shows. And like friends, it's friends performing for friends, you know? It's like agnostic friends, friends with Murphy's Law, you know, they're the audience sometimes and we're the audience sometimes. Yeah. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Chris Nataro is 21. You're from Long Island and you're a singer with the Crumb Suckers. Right, Crumb Suckers. You look pretty straight to me if you don't, uh, if you don't consider that an insult. That's cool. Um, uh, to tell me your, uh, what, what is it about this environment that, that attracts you, Chris? Okay, well, first of all, I'm hearing a lot of talk about uh, what we're unhappy about and all dissatisfaction and all this, yeah. but I gotta say, uh, not everybody involved with the scene is involved solely because of some type of dissatisfaction. Uh, a major element in hardcore music, I think, would be uh, concern. Agnostic Front has a song, Growing Concern. So, it's more that we notice problems in our society and we will express our dissatisfaction over them and then because of our true concern we will uh, propose a solution for the problems so yeah. it's not like just a dead end where we're just complaining griping and uh, no solutions you're not a hedonistic uh, meaningless sort no, of we're trying stand to around things. and smoke dope you have right. a political uh, message is that right political uh, you know like socially aware that's uh, another major thing is being socially aware with uh, your surroundings. Right. Excuse me, uh, Chris. Uh, right. David, let's see on number 11. Let's start with number 11, Scrupulous Children. This is from Growing Concern. Scrupulous children, we number in millions, won't stand for any more of your <laughs> crummy ideals. Teachers who profess will make them confess. They're, they've taught us not wisdom but lies. This is all to, uh, to uh, not surprisingly, very, very loud... Uh, what you want to say? That's a heavy metal sound. Hardcore. Okay. All right. Easy. Okay. A lot of difference. Hey, if I can't uh, talk, I can't grow and learn. Let me see that again. Uh, burning their textbooks and archaic outlooks in society's uh, funeral pyre. Parents who have raised us have not taught but crazed us. We'll turn and ignore as we head for the door. Can't take no more. <laughs> It's like gospel church on Sundays. <laughs> um, these young uh, men and women in our studio uh, audience do not want you to feel sorry for them. They want you to know they are having a good time. Uh, Peter Blauner's here as a journalist who wrote uh, a cover story for New York. Uh, New York. troubles you about uh, Peter's story? <laughs> I just want to say that I don't know how some dude in a $300 suit can know what hardcore is about when it comes from your heart, well, man. Why is it that, that he said that about you? I mean, well, I ain't going to go through the whole article. Did you read the article? Yeah, I read the article. Yeah. 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 What mainly bothered me is that the article seemed to be about two groupies and nothing about nothing. What is this? The Natalie Saga? Why was it Natalie? Why wasn't Murphy's Law or any other bands mentioned? No, he didn't, he didn't okay, Murphy's Law was mentioned. No, in the it article. was it was it was like Dynasty, you know, <laughs> Alexis exactly. Canton of the hardcore scene. Exactly. I don't think it was about like 
anybody in particular, not two groupies, but like about, Mur it wasn't even about Murphy's Law. They didn't even mention who's in the band. Yeah. They said, Jimmy Gestapo, Natalie. Well, this is funny. It's not, it's not Natalie. You oh, and Ronald Reagan are mad at the press. This is funny. <laughs> in other words, in other words, um, he's a dick. I talked to him too, and I know. Yeah, but, you know, it's not, it's, how old are you, may I ask? 19. 19, and you're always, and you're already angry about your press. You know, let him say what he right says. What do you care? I don't care. care. I, don't I, don't care. Do. I don't really care, but he brought me here. I talked to this guy. He bought me dinner. He bought me beers. He was cool with me, right? He talked to a lot of people, but I thought he was talking to a lot of people. He was just getting a lot of crap out of me. I don't care. He gives me beer. I don't care. They all say <laughs> Skinheads, which there is no leader. There, that's what this whole, this well, whole well, scene yeah, revolves on. No on. leaders. There are no leaders. Peter, <laughs> what is the problem here? I stand by my reporting, and if I didn't, I wouldn't be here. My idea was to do a story that wouldn't just go, wow, these guys are weird, these guys have weird hair, but to talk to people, give them a chance to, you know, say something for themselves express that there's a pretty fairly diverse group out there of different people who don't all feel exactly the same way, that our individuals have a, you know, a diverse range of concerns, and that's what I succeeded in doing. Hold it. Let me show you, uh, let me show you the second lyric here. But public assistant, public assistance. You're 19? <laughs> you spend your life on welfare lines. Listen to this now. Those, um, or looking for handouts. Why don't you go find a job? You birth more kids to up your checks. So you can buy more drugs, cash in food stamps, and get drunk. Has this got a kind of reactionary look to it, doesn't it? Uncle Sam takes half my pay so you can live for free. I got a family and bills to pay. No one hands money to me. This is a... That's right. This could be the song of the... Of the, uh, of the world. <laughs> How come it's minorities who cry things are too tough on TV with their gold chains? Claim they don't have enough. I say make them clean the sewers. Have we got, have we got racism here? Not racism, reality. Don't take no resistance. If they don't like it, go to hell and cut their public assistance. Well, we've got ourselves a real, real uh, mixed bag here. This is... Uh, we're not racist, we're right. I'll only take a moment. Let's make a couple of points. This country, proud American country, now that we're about to celebrate our statue, has really very little time for its kids. I mean, there is nothing more useless in this culture than a 16-year-old anything. We don't know what to do with you. We do not accept you where you are. We are impatiently waiting for you to grow up. We think you're lazy. We don't think you get it. And we are working so hard ourselves that we've literally uh, probably lost our connection with many of you. Um, that's number one. You tell me that there are fewer teenagers today, which makes what? A sense of community more difficult. Yeah, so, uh, well, I think especially once you get outside the major cities and into the suburbs, people who I interviewed said they felt a very strong sense of isolation out there. There are fewer things, I think, that are meant for teenagers to do out in the suburbs. There are fewer movie theaters that are around in New York State. If you're under 21, you can't go to a bar. That's another point. We have now raised the drinking age to 21, consigning most of our young people to break the law. Expecting people in this culture to get to 21 without consuming alcohol is, shall we say, unrealistic. It does not mean that everybody under 21 is drinking. It does say, however, that a significant percentage of those who are do. We should also make this point. When we lower the drinking age, more people get killed on the highway. We've got ourselves a terrible alcohol bind in this country. Um, beyond that, uh, I'm not sure we have enough jobs to go around for these folks. I'm, tr I'm, I don't, I'm not sure we do at all. I, I, I think there's a lot of boredom out there. Well, if people would and if we people build activity not, centers for you, you'll laugh at us. You won't even go. <laughs> 7 to 11 is where you want to stand around. <laughs> but your lyrics here, and I do not ask you all to uh, uh, take responsibility for them, your lyrics here are racist. You appear... <laughs> 
It's reality, huh? Not it's racist. Not racist. So, uh, doesn't who's is public assistance? Whose work is public assistance? Yeah. Agnostic Front. Yeah, ag yeah. Public assistance. Why don't you go find a job? <laughs> Uncle Sam takes half my pay. Okay. I'm well, the guitarist for Agnostic Front, and we just speak of social unrest. Yeah. Uh, conflict of interest, which in turmoil brings, uh, you know, controversy. Yeah. And uh, it speaks for itself. Speaks for itself. Grenade. <laughs> Goodbye. There's no racism in that song. There's no you color mentioned. There. There's no there's no class. All it says is what it says. How come it's minorities who cry? Things are too tough on TV with their gold chain. Where do you find where do you find racism? You're sticking it in. You brought it up and now you're gonna attach that to us. I see. That's not right. Okay. There's no racism there. I could take you downtown and show you people yep. that have babies just so their welfare checks are raised and get more money. Oh, just a second. Yes, ma'am. What do these kids really want and what are you looking for? Well, I want money. <laughs> I'm looking for They want to have fun. A new car and a nice motorcycle. About the housing problem. A house. He said about the housing problem, the high rents. That might be an important issue. Uh, that's another grievance, isn't it? It's uh, you've got to be a very wealthy person to live in New York. Is that your point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think the problem I have with the group is it's it's against prejudice and it's against stereotype, and yet they do the same to the other majority. And it's sort of, you're guilty of the sins that you seek to condemn. <laughs> what's the matter? <laughs> I'd love to know what you're saying. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Hang on. Hang on just a second. You have six children? Yes, I do. What do you um, think? I, I think I've learned a lot today. This young gentleman just told me that what's written on the back of one of the jackets here is a rock group. Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning a lot about it. I think they're very insightful young people. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that for a hand. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I, I realize that we all have grievances, but they are insightful. And I'm going to come away with this thinking that uh, maybe we should look into this a little bit more. We all have some of these grievances, too. I don't know how it's going to be solved. <laughs> to my children, yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. So this is, this is not, isn't this just another, uh, you know, Elvis was a rebellion, the Beatles were a rebellion, Andy Hardy was a rebellion. I mean, didn't his father, he had a fight with his father, and they put on a musical. Uh, so what are we doing? What's going on here? Is this a hitch up in the, um, in the rebellion drama? A hitch up? How do you mean hitch more, up? More, more, more. Why are you asking uh, him? He's not one. Uh, because I'm a reporter. You'll, you'll get your chance to answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie? Excuse me. Do you want to answer? Well, I, I, a point that I'd like to make, it seems to me that uh, um, every media involvement that I've had, the people always ask the experts on what's going on with us. They never, I mean, you know, you are asking us, but he's just a writer. Ask he, my mother if it's a yeah, hitch because she know? was into rock and roll, and now it's my turn. It just goes on the line. Isn't and, you know, just, you know? I, I just, you know, I, I sort of get offended sometimes when, when people ask the experts what's going on with kids. Why don't you ask the kids? We're the you know, experts. Tired of surveys all the time. This is called uh, the hardcore scene, we, uh, if, if that's the yeah. nomenclature. How do you feel about this? We'll be back. You like my suit? I look kind of yeah, nice. Yeah. In just a moment. All right. Just a moment, yeah. The point we wanted to make is how many people are in the audience like ourselves drive a $50,000 car or have been in a $50,000 car? Yeah. Nobody. I mean, I mean, I mean, $40,000 car, yeah. $5,000 car. She's 20 years car. old. I don't consider her a kid anymore. My gosh, when you're yes, 20 years old, you know, 
Well, you should be doing a little bit more with your life than like what? sitting there going like this. What, what, what do you suggest I do with my life? Well, I have a 14-year-old daughter who goes to school, baby, the baby sits to buy her own clothes and things like that. Do these kids uh, go to school? Do they babysit? Buy some clothes? Yeah. Yeah. We all, yeah. No, we sit around and drink beer all day. What do you guys do when you turn 30 or 40? I mean, what do you guys do? Keep rocking. I'd like to know how many of the civilians in your audience have ever had to steal food because you didn't have any money to buy any and no one gave it to you in a handout. So you might not drive $50,000 cars, but you're all doing a damn sight better than most of us. I never let myself get into a position. Hold it, just a moment. Hold it a moment. I never let myself get into a position where I'd have to steal food or let anybody do anything to me because he bought me beer. I mean, I would never let, I would never paint myself into a corner. Hold yes, ma'am. You don't like living by rules and regulations. How are you going to set examples for your children when you have them? Who said we're going to have children? We've all been sterilized. Yeah, yeah. We want children to grow up to be themselves, and that's what this is about. It's a rebellion against being like everybody else. You just want to be yourself. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. When I was 17, I joined the army. I didn't ask for a handout. I joined the army. And when I came out of the army, I went to work. I, I've been working ever since I came out of the army. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, hardcore scenes, there's a hardcore scene on Marine base camps also. They have bands that, that are... We got a bunch of the Navy. Marines that John are Bruno. Kids. John Bruno. Tell me... Um, I can name well over 50 kids that are in the United States service. Now, now what, do you, what does the club draw here? Now, my understanding is that hardcore plays large places in Southern right. California. Now it does. Now it in does. Southern California and New York it plays the Ritz about once a month, almost once every two weeks now, draws up to 2,000 more people. CBGB seems to draw about 500 or so Sunday afternoons. Um, <laughs> clubs across the entire country, almost every major city seem to have had some kind of hardcore shows or another. So It's getting bigger and bigger every day. There's a lot That's of it out right. there. And then pretty soon it'll be mainstream and then you'll have to do something else. How it started, there was the Rock Hotel. It was a small, it was a small hotel, Jane Street Hotel. And event, uh, like the shows got bigger and bigger to where they couldn't fill. They, could, they filled the club up and they, they had to turn kids away. So they had to move to the Ritz, a bigger venue. And now that place is packing out. Yeah. Natalie is honest to say that she rebelled against the values of the school and the community or the society in which she were raised. Your parents are both professional people, is that so? Yeah. Um, uh, what is your relationship with them now? I mean, well, I get along with them a lot better now because I think <laughs> that they, they realize, I mean, when I was a teenager and I was a minor they still had legal you know rights to tell me what to do and to try to make me behave the way they considered appropriate for an upper middle class young lady like myself but um now that i'm an adult um they're very generous to let me live at home i appreciate it a lot and they're very generous to pay for my education so, so you are living at home now yes i'm living at home and my parents are paying for me to go to college and um, we, we've established a lot better relationship now because we came to an understanding. You know, they, they understand that this is how I want to be and they accept it, you know, and they don't love me any less because I have two colored hair or, you know, or anything. You must admire them for making this. This is an adjustment, isn't yeah, it? you agree? It, it is a big adjustment. And um, whatever, I know a lot of people may think that, God, if, if my kid came home like looking like that, I'd freak out or I'd hate them. No, your parents, if they're really good parents. They'll love you no matter what you look like, no matter what you stand for. Parental love should be unconditional. Yeah. But that's the thing about this scene. It's an honest scene. It's not like yeah. kids that would wear lacrosse shirts and, and dress nice. Your average kid that would come home and look absolutely normal, but meanwhile the parents don't know that he's on drugs or he's a waste of life, you know? Yeah. As long yeah. as he looks <laughs> the right, as long as he looks part, good. You, you know? are all drug free. Oh, definitely. Of course. <laughs> The laughter suggests that they don't believe you. Oh, of course they do. Don't you believe me? Now, 
Can we talk? Uh, how about your folks, uh, Jimmy? Are, uh, are you living at home? My, fa my parents are professional people, too. My dad's a professional window washer, and my mom's a <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you live at home? Yes, I live at home in the story of Queens. Got a nice pit bull. And, oh, my little brother over there? That's my brother right there. He's normal. <laughs> so far. Um, how about you? How about you, Chris? You're 21. Right. Legally, you're an adult. Yeah. Uh, you were raised in Long Island, so you're the suburban man. Right, suburban. Uh, well, you see, out in suburbia is a... Uh, something that hardcore kind of stands against and that's apathetic attitudes like we we're talking about drugs and all that yeah. prevalent uh, lifestyle for a lot of suburban kids is hang out at the shopping malls and then uh, you know maybe go to school half-heartedly go to school and um, some other kind of non-constructive activities will be involved with uh, often drug uh, use is part of the daily routine and heck we're just trying to do a little more than that we're trying to let ourselves be known okay we're young people but we don't want to be known for those things we want to be known for wanting to make some changes and uh you know fight the apathy and but we want to have a good time doing it too you know right. we're not all extremists on the left or extremists totally on the right i have to say we may be a little we're more in the middle the right. look at this right here <laughs> let me tell you let him make his point a lot of your audience out here the uh older people I didn't say old people, I said older people. Yeah, we're not insulting. Now, uh, I, I feel that we probably have a lot of the same political uh, ideas and beliefs as them. Yeah. Uh, you, you, think, you think that the hardcore community leans to the right, is that what you're saying? I really think so, yeah. So there's a certain That's Reagan tough. sort of sympathy oh, in this. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Back to the editing process. That's not funny. Well, what's interesting yeah. is that a lot yeah. of the kids seem to have... Yeah. I just wanted to say that I think looks are too important here. Um, before you said about the lacrosse guy, he's wearing a lacrosse shirt, a rugby yeah, so shirt. You look very nice today, Don. Is he a nerd <laughs> because he's dressed like that? No, he's just, he's just a guy. I was okay. just giving an example. Okay, I Am I think, a nerd because I dress no, like this? No, I don't think so. I think that um, the way you dress is fine, the way I dress is fine, the way Phil dresses is fine, but... When you start like saying, um, when, when, when you start saying that, like you want to steal for food, you want to steal that one person said that. When you want to say that you want to steal that fifty thousand dollar car, and you want to say that um, you're afraid, you know, if if you start hurting people, that's when like if I would start hurting people, that's when there'd be a problem. I agree. Right. With you. Yeah. I agree. With you. Uh, okay. yeah. the, these people don't want to be any different than anyone else, but they br they draw attention to themselves. You're very loud. You're very vocal. You can sit and have a normal yeah. conversation like anybody else. I don't have to yell at you people to get my point across, but you seem to have to yell at us. It's more fun it's to yell. <laughs> yeah. It's not a matter of being... We're all deaf. Our music is so loud. You want to be treated like adults. I'm an adult and you're adults, and you happen to be intelligent people, and you have a sense of values. I mean, but drawing, is, drawing attention to yourselves by dress is one thing. Being vocal and, and abusive is something people. else. All right, yeah. so Peter, is it your view so that, uh, that the bright kids are attracted to hardcore? Hmm. In uh, a surprising amount of cases, yeah. It is the kids, what they seem to have in common is that they can't or won't fit in. In a lot of cases, that's going to entail the smartest kids in the yeah. class. And especially since the movement or the scene does not depend upon television or radio to really carry their music because most of it's a little bit too raw. The major means of communication across the country seems to be a series of fanzines, they're called, which are magazines, put out by the kids themselves. There are somewhere over 500 of them. And in order to have the organizational skills yeah. uh, and creativity to put one of these things together, I mean, yeah. it calls upon a certain amount of independence and intelligence. Yeah. Uh, I'm impressed, though, with the observation that this has a, a, a right tilt to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, you know, that's certainly legal. I'm, I'm not sure I understand why. Well, they allow us to do this. This is America. It, it, we couldn't do this in any other country, really. And no, no, I, in a lot of other countries, there are. No, that explains questions. your existence. I'm trying to figure out your politics. Well, I just did this. Mixed politics. Well, except that there's been at least one observation that uh, you're more you likely... You stereotype the group. There's people that are completely left, people completely right, people in the middle, people who don't even want to talk people, about politics. There are people who want to abolish the government, just want yeah. to go crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm not into the hardcore scene myself, but a lot of my friends are. Right. And these people are willing to back us up 100% in any belief that we want. They would back you up more than some of our parents would back us up. Like on, on issues like, for example? 
No, just like anything. Like if I believe that, all right, I happen to like disco. Now they have nothing against that. They're all, they don't care. They listen to their music, the, the things that they write in their music. So it's, in other words, it's their that, feelings. Yeah. It's their feelings. Like Something just like all right, they listen to who? Frank Sinatra. That's his feelings, and they enjoy. Yes, they enjoy Frank Sinatra. And nobody's laughed at for that. That's right. Nobody's laughed, and nobody says, "Well, listen, you listen to Frank Sinatra, so yeah. take a walk." I like just that. because they listen to hardcore, they're put down. These people happen to be respectable people, and they have beliefs like anybody else. Yeah. They're human beings. Yeah. 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 And we'll be back. I'll give you a chance. I promise. In just a moment. Yeah. Does that make you angry? And how would you feel if your child did? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and why is is this about being angry at your parents? I'm going to ask this one more time. I know that there's mixed bag here, and I'm not suggesting you all march like wooden soldiers. But is this what happens when the adult community goes about its task of workaholism? Uh, and doesn't pay much attention to the kids, or is that blame mom for this? And should anybody be blamed at all? Well, I, I, don't, for, I don't think that most kids really are too concerned with what their parents are feeling, what kind of music they're into as far as that, because, I mean, you know, we're, it's like more they're concerned about what they want to do, you know? It's like, it's not the parents that we're rebelling against, it's more like, authority who tries to just like cram all kinds of materialistic like bogus views down our throats since like childhood it's not parents you know because i mean i've done what i want and my mother loves me anyway even though she may not agree with everything i do i haven't even lived with her for a long time but i still totally you know yeah. think she's I a wonderful you person from high school? i didn't even get to it you didn't go to high school at all <laughs> nah. uh what do you what do you plan oh, to do way, i play bass with the chrome ags we got an album coming out <laughs> So is this a commercial? Uh, well, what's different? This may be this may be a very insightful marketing. Uh, you may not have here. But what's school. interesting also, what I just happened to <laughs> notice along the way while I was doing the story, is that a lot of the kids are 15 and 16 years old. If you're 15 or 16, that means you were born in 1970 or 71, and it's very likely that your parents were young people during the 50s or 60s. So for a lot of those people, to say that you're into rock and roll as a kid means nothing. Uh, to dress a little strangely doesn't mean that much. Uh, in other words, in order to rebel or to be notable or declare your independence, you have to do something a little bit different. The ante is maybe upped, you know. I see. I think yeah. just too much value has been, um, I, mean, I mean, I think there's just been too much attention on uh, what like certain individuals relationships with their uh, parents and their people in the suburbs and, and their schools and this or that has been made too, to, be, to seem too important because I mean when I go to a show we don't sit around and talk about what our parents are saying or what how school is going I don't know I, I mean we're there to have a you good know, time I mean we're there to, to have a good time you know with our friends and uh, seeing bands that we like you know, yeah, this is uh, the singer from the Chrome. This is Nuclear Assault. There's a lot so, of bands. Yeah. Okay, right. hold on. Okay, this all ties in with uh, the gentleman here and the gentleman here who enlisted in the army. Now, um, the way I look, I'm out of work. I live in the streets. I can't get a job unless I cut my hair, start wearing a suit. Okay, the first time I went to CB's to deal with the punks, uh, it was before a lot of long hair started going there, and. I was scared the first time because I figured, okay, I'm going to walk in the door and somebody's going to make something out about the length of my hair. But I, got, I was accepted into the crowd as soon as they realized that I wasn't trying to abuse the scene. Now, yeah. Yeah. So it's the opposite. This community is the opposite of a society that you think is chasing a lot of phony rules. Bogus. Huh? Bogus. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You can't say that, this is, that the hardcore scene is all nice. There's like so many cliques and everything. And everybody's like... Big, yeah, it's it's still it's just like a big high school. I mean, everything goes on, but we do have a good time. Yeah. But there are clicks. Now, now just 
try and enlighten Father Time, please. <laughs> is, uh, is, are, how, how much have drugs uh, threatened the community, and how, how much is part of the scene is that? Nothing. I mean, there's people that choose to do it who don't. I mean... So some do, some don't. Is that it? Right. Whoever... Right below you. Right today. As much as religion has threatened it? Yeah. You'll stand? You wanted to make a point. Oh. Not yeah. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it. My name's Ray from Youth of Today. Sir. Yeah. This, uh, like, yeah. like you said, it's a high school with a lot of cliques. Some cliques move to the right, some cliques move to the left, some cliques don't drink, like people here. Some people abuse drinks, but that's the greatest thing I see about hardcore scene today. Well, actually, before, it was very independent. People put on their own shows. Kids up in Albany, New York, kids in Rhode Island, kids in New York, put on their own shows at their own risk. People put out their own magazines. Bands put out their own records. So it's like an entrepreneurial feature to this right. thing. Yeah. It's, it's, not a, it's a great funny. thing, and there's no big business to interrupt it until recently. What happened recently? Recently? I'm not saying if it's good or bad, but bigger record labels move in, big business at shows. Um, yeah, but even this has a sort I of, think it takes, even your t-shirt has a kind of commercial look about it. That doesn't mean you're going to right, hell. Well, just, which we printed at my little brother's high school. You did? Right. Yeah. Well, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I have an 18-year-old at home that would be absolutely thrilled to be here today. Um, he has, yeah, you want to come home for dinner? He has what? He has a, a mohawk and, and loves all the jewelry. Um, and this nice conservative woman who said she'd have to take a look at this, she appears to me that she'd have a coronary if one of her kids <laughs> came home looking like this. <laughs> I'm not thrilled with it. But to tell you the truth, I really like this, this young man, and he and I get along very well. Um, I'm not crazy about how he wants to look, and I'm not sure why you have to look so... But we do, so accept it. <laughs> it's okay, I just, I'm not sure why. Yeah. You know what's really painful is I have a sister, very similar to all of you, and to see her rejected, she's a wonderful person. And I've walked through parking lots, and people have screamed and sworn at her and said she was a pig. Because she's what? Because she looks like these guys, you know, she's got wild hair, wonderful person. And you're saying, why would a person voluntarily set themselves up for that kind no, of abuse? No, no, it's, well, I don't understand why people say things, you know, it's like, so what? You know, you can see, you well, look... Well, maybe they have a point then, we are worrying about... They have a definite point. You can listen to all the different people in this audience, and you'll get somebody real far right, just like they said, and real far left. And it has to do with human beings and where they're at in life. Uh, not so how they You drive. understand your sister. You love your sister. I, thought, I can understand. How old is your sister? She's 21. And I can understand why these people get really angry at people judging them and saying, Oh, you have your hair like this. But, you but I wonder if, you know, if the anger wasn't there, what would be the motive for this kind of a, you know what I mean? My sister does it because she, th she thinks it looks good. She likes it. A little. I'll give you a chance to explain it in just a moment. about the pro-American attitude. Yeah. Well, one thing is that just because we look different, it's hard to get a job, but you get people who can't even like, speak three words of English and they get a job just because they look normal, but they can't even communicate. That's right. So they may look different, That's right. but we can function, you know? Yeah. We can talk to people and they can't, and just because yeah. we look different, we can't get a job. Dig. See, the point is, we don't want to get caught up on fashion, you know, or anything like that, and separate ourselves like that. What we got to realize is that, you know, there's serious problems in this country, and that's what we have to deal with. Yeah, we agree. Yes, ma'am. What kind of a job would he be applying for that he couldn't get? Anything just working Any like in a deli, <laughs> anywhere, you know, any old job. Yeah. 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 Well, it's true, you know, people will hire you just because of how you look. I know I've been turned down for jobs I've been skilled for. What? Like, I like to watch kids, and I have a lot of references, and a lot of people just look at me, and they'll be, I wouldn't watch you with my kids. And I take... Yeah, don't you understand that? Well, I can, but they don't talk to me and get to know what's inside at all, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, at all. Yeah. Sure. Yes, yes, ma'am. I have a seven-year-old son that would be scared to death of Pete if she was his baby. How do you know? You understand that. Now, there's no reason to be insulted. Yeah. It's going to have to be poor and hardcore. Hold it. It's going to have to be what? Uh, we can't. Yeah. You don't have. 
Hoots, <laughs> my kid, you're never going to be accused of being shy. You wanted to say what? Uh, you don't have to be poor and hardcore. You don't have to be a revolutionary. These kids create a revolution on their own. They do. These kids uh, are, the, are the real showers of the change. That's what makes America different. Well, well, I guess, what are they revolting? People tell us what to say, like this lady but things being the same all the time. You can make things happen. All right. You know, I want to say that a lot has been said here today about the dress yeah. and the cons, the bad things about hardcore, when really there's a lot of good things that are self-productive and there's a lot of good bands out there and talent that shouldn't be missed. Everybody's individuality, whether you're wearing leather bracelets or gold bracelets, that's okay. But when it affects your very next meal, don't you really wonder whether or not you shouldn't do something to change it? Well, this well, is America. You should be able to do whatever you want to do. Let me see if I've got this now. Hardcore includes publishing your own uh, magazine with information that's important to you, producing your own music, everything, uh, staging your own recreational events, social events. In some cases, starting your own I mean, you know, company. maybe they'll wind up with all the money and we'll all be knocking on the door. Uh, yeah. I want to know why you keep making this a revolt. Just because it's different, you isolate it, and then you call it a revolt and ask why and who should we blame. Why do you words, do that? Yeah, in other words, it's uh, prejudicial to suggest that anybody should be to blame. No, I'm saying you I understand. isolated. I think I get your point. And if there was acceptance of difference in, in America... In other words, I want to blame this that. woman for having... You'll stand... Do I understand? You know what? See, I, I, there's a, I shouldn't blame her for this kind of hairdo. Uh, we shouldn't be asking who, who can we blame We're not for blaming you for your hair. This isn't a phenomenon. Yeah, it's, a lit, it? it's different. And in order for difference only becomes rebellious when it's not accepted. And it's this country that isn't accepting it. I see. So it's a phenomenon in this country. What? Blame is a word that is used when something is done wrong. Yeah. Why are you thinking in terms of the blame? Yeah. Blame our parents for being like this. Yeah. Yeah. Done wrong. And yet you're asking, who should we blame that you exist? Yeah. I don't know if it I said blame. I'm trying to explain it, I, I guess. You do make well, you a point, though. There's a certain yeah, you have to have yeah. the hair that way. Yes, ma'am. Just like you want to have I, the hair that I, way. Your, your objection is on the record. Yes. I feel that you people have excessive needs for attention. I want to know how you feel about it. through the same thing when Listen, please. when we went through the thing with the kids with the long hair and the peace and love but we and had a war that was killing yes, hundreds of people, people. Those, people were making a week. A point. those people were making a point and what they made was the point was that yeah. they could change things and half of the people that were running around with the peace and love and the hair down to the road are now politicians and they're making this world so a better think, place you think we've got IBM uh, future IBM But these kids have potential. They're, you know, these kids could grow up in 10 years and be po politicians they or could. change the right. world. I hope I haven't said anything in any case that I don't think they would. No, 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 but right. I'm saying that they have as much potential as anybody else. Billy Sutton for president! You don't need a war, a war to dress good. Um, I'm in a band called Token Entry and everybody's got a job. Everybody goes to school. You don't need a war to dress cool. You don't like being told yes. to say yeah. either. I'd like to know why you think that just because we don't dress hardcore that we're not doing what we want to do. We I'm doing what I want to do in my that. life. And that, we don't care about you. Um, if you think we look so funny, why do you copy us in your magazines and TV? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be back in just a moment. The number one thing. Let me show them uh, Shoot His Load, Agnostic Front. This is um, hardcore, uh, just one of the lyrics. Minding his own business, riding subway trains, got ripped off twice, ain't gonna happen again, withdrew a hundred dollars, bought himself a piece, can't depend on anyone, he's his own police. Listen to this ode to uh, Bernie Getz. Tired of being preyed upon by the scum of the earth, tonight he'll be the predator, someone's gonna get hurt. Walked into an empty car, found himself a seat, five low lives waited there, uh, waiting for fresh meat. One by one surrounded him, trapped him by the door, finger on the trigger, got more than they asked for. Bernie gets his man, now he stands trial, a criminal he's told, but he's got the satisfaction of shooting his load. If that is not right wing, I'll, I'll, I don't know what, you like that. Self-defense. Self-defense. Uh-huh. 
Self-defense. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now you like you you you're centering this all around one band. New York's got a lot more bands yes, than one do. band, and there's a lot of positive thinking bands in this band in this city. You made the point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All these people, like you know, um, they're like. They're just saying that um, they don't even know us, and you know they're looking at us like you know there's something wrong with us. But yeah. if they got to know us, you know they see a lot of these people we know, yeah. and they're all yeah. good people. Let me try a little amateur analysis. Now, don't get crazy. Just let me make the point. <laughs> this is a this is a group of people who've been who, from the moment they were old enough to know what's what, had adults, including parents, saying, "How come you nineteen? How come you? Why are you hanging? You always come in tomorrow time. You always come in and so you get to be 16 and you paint your hair orange, you get them the finger and you say, no, now no, I've done everything no. you expected me to do, and you're loving it. And you, is it pot? Am I close? No. 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 What's the matter? What do my parents have to do with my band? It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with parents. I grew up in the story of Queens where on, the, on, every, on every street corner, every other street corner, there's kids sitting there listening to the doors. The doors are, are like dead, ancient. They listen to old people, you mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I, got into this, I got into this music not because of my parents, because I could go see live bands All right. and come part of the All right, hang on a minute. Let's try it. Let's try it. Well, I'm, I'm out of time. I just want to make it clear that none of us was born this way. We, people, society made us this way. They told us we were nothing, told us we were scum. That's my point. We'll what you wanted to say? Well, one thing I wanted to say was Vinny Stigma was supposed to be on this show. He was 30 years old. They wouldn't let him on. Raise He's your hand. Vinny, Vinny, got Vinny. Got Vinny. Vinny. The impression you wanted to give was that it was only for 15 and 16 year olds, but it doesn't. It's, it's bigger. Yeah. It's, it's bigger than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Don't Service forget to be uh, and promotional fees paid by the fire.